Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. When the Spirit of the Lord begins to deal with me about this item here tonight, I want to bring to you in a Bible study. And uh, I told you we're going to do a leadership principle, but the Holy Ghost has impressed on me to do this tonight. And so I'm going to teach a Bible study. We are facing strong spiritual attacks. Now, if that's half-hearted you said that, you still don't understand what's going on. We are facing strong spiritual attacks. Somebody said, well, Pastor, it's just I've had a bad week because of da-da-da-da-da. Then you don't know it, but somebody else called me and told me the same story. That's not coincidence. That's spiritual issues. That's why a shepherd can look at the sheep and see this is not an isolated itch issue, but it is a spiritual attack that is happening on the flock. And so as a pastor, I come to tell you tonight uh, that we are under a strong spiritual attack. And you say you're crediting the Satan. No, what I'm telling you is you better wake up and recognize what's going on, uh, else you lose out with living for God. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers uh, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness uh, in high places. I don't know if you realize this, uh, but our elected officials of our nation uh, are turning away from the, tr uh, the truth of Jesus Christ, uh, and they are being put in leadership. Uh, and when they get in leadership, they're not going to stay spiritually uh, if they're not spiritual when they went in. Uh, and there you're seeing people that are uh, pushing for a abortions and pushing for gay rights uh, and pushing for ungodly actions uh, and, and things of our nation. Uh, if that's happening up in the leadership of our nation, uh, it's going to affect you and the nation that we live in. Uh, you have got to be aware that what's happening on the front page of the paper is a spiritual issue. Uh, Yes, read the front page. Murdering, killing, all that. What is that? That's a sign of the spirit of the day we're living in. We are in a spiritual battle, church. Well, I'm just going to go do my little shout for Jesus. You're going to need more than shouting for Jesus. You need the Word of God in your spirit. You need the Holy Ghost anointing in your spirit. Uh, you need to know how to claim the blood and plead the blood. Uh, you need to know how to get a hold to God and make a difference in your walk with God. Uh, it ain't no time for pansies. Uh, it's time for men to stand. Uh, and it's time for women of the faith to stand uh, and say, I'm going to live for God. Uh, I'm going to learn how to pray. I'm going to learn how to fast. Uh, I'm going to learn how to get a word from God. Uh, I'm going to plead the blood. I'm going to live under the covering of the blood. I'm not going to miss church. I'm not going to miss prayer. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you, I'm fired up. i got to feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. Hallelujah. I want to deal with some items. Uh, I'm going to deal with authority tonight. I'm not going to deal with pastoral authority. That's not what I'm dealing with. Uh, I'm going to deal with spiritual authority. Uh, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, if you have repented of your sins, you have been baptized uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of your sins, uh, and you have received the Spirit of God, uh, the Spirit of resurrection in your spirit, uh, and you're walking godly, uh, you have authority over every devil, uh, every demon, uh, and every sp evil spirit of our day. Uh, you can stand on authority. right here lets me know how bad we need the teaching. I'm going to show you in the book. You should not be intimidated by evil spirits. You should take authority over evil spirits. Sister Trammell works for Intel Corporation. She's, a, she's an architect, electronic architect, uh, makes very good money, a very high-paying salary job. Uh, but she works amongst a lot of uh, homosexual people. Uh, and she got in her little cubicle of her work of her office, uh, and she began to plead the blood over her desk. Uh, she pled the blood over the walls around her desk. Uh, she pleaded the blood over the threshold into her office. Uh, and she said, I call on the name of the Lord. Uh, and when I knew they came into my office and they were living that lifestyle, I began to rebuke the spirit, uh, not them laughing. Out. But in the spirit, I said, I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. That that spirit cannot come into my cubicle and into my office. I'm going to tell you what, in this very last day, if you don't learn how to get a hold of God and take authority in God's word, in God's spirit, you're not going to be here in the trumpet sounds. I'm going to deal with some items of spiritual authority tonight. I didn't read this out of a book. I got it in prayer. You need to learn the chain of command in spiritual authority. 
You need to learn how to go in the chain of spiritual authority. There is a chain, and I'm going to deal with it. The second item you need to learn to do is how to receive empowerment. How do I empower myself to fight spiritually? You need to learn that the Word of God is empowerment. Notice this, Jesus went up to the mountain. Jesus went and fasted 40 days, uh, and he prayed 40 days. Uh, but guess what, friend? Uh, when he came out, uh, Satan was waiting on him and began to tempt him. Uh, and what did Jesus do? Uh, he just hightailed and ran. No, he did not. Uh, he said, it is written. Uh, it is already settled in heaven and in earth uh, that the word of God is stand steadfast. Uh, I don't have to back down. Don't have to be intimidated. Uh, I've got the word of God. Uh, devil, your future is determined already. Uh, Satan, you have no claims over my soul. I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, Satan can't infill your soul. Let me tell you what, I'm preaching in authority tonight. I'm not preaching intimidated. I'm preaching of authority tonight. When you come and I come into the pulpit, I don't come and preach the sermonizing. Uh, I didn't bring you wives' tales. Uh, I didn't bring you cute little stories. Uh, I came and said, thus saith the word of God. Uh, I take authority in the name of the Lord. Uh, you're in your home you want to say thus saith the word of god we are more than victors in the lord listen friend if you don't stand and resist him he'll take over your home stand up in the word i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna go on here but i'm gonna i'm gonna deal with some more of this a little later listen to this uh, you get empowerment by the spirit of god acts 1 and 8 said and you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Well, how do you get the Holy Ghost? You pray. When you pray, you should get refilled in the Holy Ghost. And then the Spirit should give you empowerment to fight the spirit of the day we're fighting of. The reason you're intimidated is you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. It's not suggestive. It's commandment. Get thee behind me. He rebuked his disciple with that statement. You get empowerment when God is word. You get empowerment by the Holy Ghost. You get empowerment by God's ministry in your life. The ministers that are in your life. Your pastor is, a, is an empowerment to your life. The ministry of those who preach in the pulpit are strengths for your life. Let me tell you what, you come to church and the devil's trying to wear you out, baby, and there's somebody come gets in the pulpit. They don't know your name. They don't know where you live. They don't know where you work. Uh, but they all of a sudden begin to preach the word, uh, and that's like they know your address. They know where you were raised. Uh, they know everything and about your life. Why? Because the Spirit of God said, I want you to preach to somebody. Why? Because they need a little empowerment. Uh, they need a little encouragement and a strengthening uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's why we bring in evangelists and we bring in ministers that don't attend here. They don't know our names. Uh, they just come in here under the free anointing of God uh, and deal with their situation. Uh, it, it ain't just a fill in that pastor gets a night off. Uh, it's a sure word of God. Uh, it comes into the pulpit, uh, and you ought to grasp a hold of it and say, uh, the word of God said it by the prophet, uh, and I'm going to hold on to the word of God. You're empowered by the disciples of Christ. You're empowered by your brother. You're empowered by your sisters in the Lord. You can bind together with them and take authority over things that are happening in your life. If two agree as touching anything, if two would bind together and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I take authority over this attack on my family. I take authority over the items that are coming against our church and our families. If you do that, you are strengthening. You are strengthening, and you have authority over that thing uh, turn with me to James chapter 4 I'm just going to teach and I feel very strongly anointed of God I feel a very strong anointing of God I'm not intimidated by the devil I'm telling you there are three items you need to learn you need to learn how the command of works in the things of the spirit uh, you need to learn how to get empowered uh, and then you need to learn how to resist the tax of Satan there's three things you need to learn. It's not just empowerment. It's knowing how to resist things. James 4 and 1. And you should have your Bibles. 
You're already weak if you ain't got your Bible. Why you push Bible reading, Pastor? It's what's going to give you strength. I talk with people. I counsel people. They come here and I counsel them. Uh, and they got scriptures, but they can't put it together A to B uh, and B to C. Uh, They're all confused in their minds and everything else. Why? Because they got they got a little word. They hear it here and they heard over there, but they hadn't put it together. That's why you need the word of God in your own spirit. Uh, read out of your own word of God that you hold. James 4 and 1, from, then, from hence come wars and fightings among you. Come they not hence even of your flesh that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss uh, that ye may consume it un upon your lust. Uh, ye adulterers and your adulteresses, uh, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enemy or enmity with God? Uh, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You're carnal worldly, you ain't got empowerment to fight satanic spirits. You think they're just relatives moving in. Because they're kindred spirits. I don't understand, Pastor. They just keep coming in and they're tormenting my mind. Why? A carnal mind. And when that opposition comes in, you just think that they're all they're all connected together, and it's okay because you're used to living carnal. I'm very teaching. Ooh, I'm fixing to plow. Verse five. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth he giveth more grace? Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And notice this right here in verse number 7. Uh, the first one of the sp first spiritual keys is this. Watch this. Uh, verse 7. Uh, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Uh, the reason we are not empowered is we have not got a submission to the word of the Lord uh, and the spirit of God working in our life. Uh, if you're living a life unsubmitted to the word of God and the spirit of the Lord, uh, you do not have the power that you need to live successfully. You must learn uh, how to submit your spirit. Uh, you say, prove it. Uh, I'll prove it by Jonah. He didn't submit the word of God. He didn't have the power to live like he should have lived. Uh, Hey, if you don't learn to submit to the word of the Lord uh, and you don't learn how to submit to the spirit of the Lord, uh, you're already weak in the fight of faith. Uh, submit yourself, therefore, to the Lord. Second item, resist the devil. Don't give him no place. Watch this word, resist, in Strong's 436. If you want to uh, check up on your pastor, the word resist means this, uh, to set oneself against. Uh, it means to withstand. Uh, it means to resist. Uh, it means to oppose. Uh, it also means to set against. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means I am coming against the devil. Uh, it means I am withstanding uh, the devil. Uh, it means I am opposing uh, the devil. Uh, it means my purpose is uh, set against the devil. Uh, I have no place for you, devil. Uh, I have no place for you to get in my thinking. Uh, I have no place in my heart. Uh, I have no place in my mind. Uh, hey, I'm resisting you. Uh, I'm against you. I'm not giving in to you. Hey, you need to get Holy Ghost boldness uh, and say, I can't stop uh, the fly uh, from the birds flying over my head, uh, but you're not building a nest uh, of doubt and ungodliness uh, in my mind. Uh, hey, come on, saint of God. Uh, you've got to learn uh, how to resist the devil. Some things you read give you the wrong thinking in your mind. You need to get it out of your house. It don't resist the devil. It brings in the devil. There are things in books that you shouldn't have in your house. There are things sitting in your house that's pre presenting a message. Uh, you shouldn't have that message in your house. Uh. Pastor, I don't know why I'm weak in the faith. I'll tell you why. The devil's played with your mind too long, uh, and it's time uh, to bring into submission uh, all the thoughts of your mind uh, and to the Word of God uh, and say, I submit my mind. Uh, I'm not going to live carnality. I'm not going to live worldly. I'm going to live in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm going to learn to live in the Spirit of the Lord. Uh,
Pastor, I don't know how to resist the devil. I'm fixing to show you how to resist the devil. When Jesus said it, uh, he gave us a key. He said, it is written. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, when the devil comes along and said, uh, hey, you can't live for God. Uh, you're going to fail. You're not going to live for God. Uh, you, hey, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, he's going to tell you, listen here, you came out of broke home. Uh, you can't live for God. Uh, you know what they're going to do? Uh, he's going to try to tell you every reason. Uh, I'm going to tell you the devil is a liar. I agree with the pre preacher Monday night, uh, but I'm going to tell you something else. Uh, you need to stop listening uh, to what the devil tells you can't do. Uh, my God, can't you tell if it's a it's you. Uh, it's not of God. Uh, if it's for you to live for God, uh, it's of the Lord. Uh, you need a little spirit discernment. Uh, hey, you know what you need to say to Satan uh, when he comes in and said, uh, hey, you're just going to have to be defeated. Uh, you're never going to get the victory. Uh, you're never going to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're never going to live successfully. I'll tell you what you need to do. Uh, you need to pull out the book uh, and say Psalms 34 and 1 said, uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praise uh, shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, honey, you ought to get the book out uh, and get busy. Is he quoting it? Huh? Here's the reason to read the book. Psalms 46 and 1. God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in my trouble. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgiveth all mine iniquities? Who healeth all my diseases? Uh, devil, you're a liar. God is still my healer. He heals me. Uh, he will be my physician. Uh, devil, you're a liar. Uh, God, you are truth. Uh, I believe you're going to heal my body. Uh, there ain't nothing in my body uh, that my God can heal. You need to get the book out. Uh, you need to read him the book uh, and tell him, uh, not on my authority, uh, on God's authority. Uh, he's a healer. You're never going to get saved and delivered of your addictions. You need to tell him who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned me with righteousness. Hey, devil, I will be delivered. I will be set free. I'll break my nicotine addictions. I'll break my alcoholic addictions. I'll break my immoral lifestyle. Why? That's the word of God in my spirit. You need to get the book out and start reminding the devil who's in charge. Psalms 104, 107 and 1 said, uh, Oh, give thanks in the Lord, for he is good. Why you want to leave? Hey, you ain't never going to have a good life living for the Lord in the church. Uh, you're missing all the fun. Uh, you need to remind him, uh, the Lord is good. Uh, his righteousness endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Uh, devil, I can't keep you. You can't keep me from living for God. Uh, you can't keep me uh, from living for you successfully, Lord. Uh, the devil can't stop that. Why? Because there's greater power in me than in the world. And I'm telling you, the church ought to be strong in their faith. They're making it over here. Baloney. Honey, I ain't thinking about backsliding. I ain't thinking about the church might slip and fall. I ain't thinking about the church is barely hanging on. Uh, honey, this thing ain't sick. It ain't even weak. Uh, it's an empowerment of God. Uh, and the Holy Ghost is in the church. Uh, you need to get a hold of something uh, and say, I am the church. Uh, I am a strong in the Lord. Uh, the Lord is my strength. Uh, uh, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Thank you for really helping me preach. Watch this. You come to church and you're saying, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it another day or two living for the Lord. I got problems. I got family troubles. I got financial troubles. I got physical sicknesses. I just don't know if I'm going to live for God to make it living for the Lord. What did you just do in the spirit? You just said, blessed be the name of Satan. Blessed be the name of Satan. He's going to win. He's going to get my soul. You come in with the same sicknesses and you say, the Lord is my physician. He's my healer. And by his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. My faith is toward the Lord. Hey, you got financial need. Hey, God, Jehovah Chira is my provider. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seat out begging for bread. Hey, I come in here and need things. Hey, you need to make it up in your mind. It's a battlefield in your soul. Hey, I made my mind up. God, to do it. Or bless God, I'll be ready for the rapture. What did the three Hebrew boys do? Well, if God helps us, good. If he don't help us, uh, I'm on my way to the whole glory land. I'm here. They wasn't shaking in the 
boots, baby. They had it settled in their mind. If God does. God heals me good. If God don't heal me good. If God gives me help here, good. If he don't, God, you're God, and I still know you're good. Come on, what am I doing? I'm teaching you how to take over in your mind uh, and get the victory in your mind, uh, and it'll show in your spirit. Uh. Come to church, quote scripture. Man, I've been under attack. Okay, I just feel impressed to tell you this. I'm going to show you what happened. Elisha and his servant get up in the morning. The servant goes out at the mountain. He's all the natural fleshly enemy. One of us saw what flesh to do, and the other one saw what was happening in the spirit. Some of us need to get a fresh uh, Holy Ghost refilling uh, and see what's in the mountain uh, on our account uh, and what's in the mountain uh, for your good. Uh, hey, the devil may be there, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Some of you come to church looking at what the flesh is doing. full of the Holy Ghost, there wouldn't be no room for all that other junk. What's full means there's no more vacancy for nothing else. It's a shame when we come to church and we have service and we have to try to get you up to pray. So, Michael, you're not a cheerleader. You're a worship leader. I'm a song leader, not a, not a cheerleader. When you come in here, we may be battling into some things of attacks on the flesh, but you should lift up some eyes of faith somewhere along the way and say, I see God in the mountains. I see a great host that is around about me. I'm in the Hebrews 12 and 1. There's a great witness around about me. There's an Abraham. There's a Moses. There's a, there's a three Hebrew boys. There's a Daniel. There's an Esther. There's a whole host. If they did it, I can do it. If they had faith, I can't believe God is going to do it in my life. If he can take care of three Hebrew boys, he can take care of you. No more scriptures that tell us that Chad Rabbi Shane and Abednego had a pity party. Let's go up, Pastor. Everybody's just mistreating me around here. Can I help you out a little bit? If you wasn't so self-centered, you wouldn't have near as some problems you're having. It just things ain't going my way, Pastor. Well, why is it so centered around you? Nobody's coming to shake my hand. Then why you got I in the middle of the whole thing? I am preaching, and I'm on a very quickly bending limb. 
You know what I do, Pastor? I, guess I listen for a little bit because... My pastor told me, he says, if you'll listen, you'll hear something come out in a minute. It tells you what's going on in the spirit. And I'm learning one of the very key things is I am not getting something. Let me go back to this. In the same scripture here. It tells us out in the book of John, uh, James, it says the first thing is, is learn how to submit ourselves. The second thing is learn how to resist the devil. Verse, uh, verse number four of that, uh, uh, of James there. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, let's go on. James chapter four, the third thing is, is in this. Uh, he, will, he will flee from you. There is a promise when you resist the devil that he will flee from you. Where's the thing you brought? Is it in here? Brother, what is that? No, just that's fine. I brought a big old sword from the house, one of the boys' swords. What do you mean resist, Pastor? I mean you get out the word. And you start rebuking him in the word. You start reading the word. You re you resisted him, and because you're reading the world, the word of God, he said, I ain't going to put up with that. Why? Because Jesus said it is written. Uh, and when he said it was written, uh, what happened? Satan checked out. He said, I ain't going to try to go against that, man. Uh, I'm going against the word of God. Uh, I'm going against the spirit of God. Uh, I'm going against a praying and a fasting man. Uh, ain't got no hope ever bringing them down. Uh, why? You need to get the book out and say, Satan, uh, let me read you a few verses. Uh, I want to resist you in my mind right now. Hey, I'm a victor. Hey, I'm going to win. I am not going to lose. You're going to hell. you got a place already determined. You're a loser. Hey, grave can't keep me down. But you're going to hell. I'm going to walk on streets of gold. You're going to be in a pit of fire. Hey, you need to know where your destination is. I'll tell you about God's word. Hey, he ain't going to stay around very long, friend. You know why you get the liberty and services? Uh, I can get in the pulpit and it be bound in the service. Uh, you know what I start doing uh, intentionally and on purpose? Uh, I get to quote in the scriptures. Uh, and, honey, I begin to feel a break. Uh, it happens in the spirit. Why? Because Satan uh, cannot stop uh, the word of God. It's determined. Uh, it's settled in heaven. Uh, it's settled in earth. Uh, he can't change it. Uh, it's undetermined. Uh, Turn the TV off. Get your Bible out. Get to reading the book. Learn how to resist the devil. You need to develop a crazy praise that drives faith to praise. That's a good thing as I can say. Develop a crazy praise that will drive faith to praise. What is it going to be to be trying to say something? Okay. You know what? When I prayed through and got the Holy Ghost as a teenage boy, I had never thought about backsliding. Never. I don't understand when people say, Pastor, I just don't know if I'm going to have to, I'm, I don't know if I can hang in here. I may, I'm, I might just backslide. Where did you get that junk? What are you letting that junk in your mind for? I done made my mind up. I'm not going to be backsliding. I'm going to live for God. I've got a goal. It's heaven. I'm going to walk on the streets of gold. I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm not in this thing on the bounds, on the bubble. I'm not on the fence. I'm not on the bubble. It's determined I'm going to live for God. 
You see, you can't be that way. Yes, you can be that way, too. Uh, those who are struggling are always on the fence and in one day and out the next and in the next and out the next. Uh, hey, you ought to be getting this thing and say, I'm sold out. Uh, it's living for the Lord. There's nothing else. Uh, you ain't got a place in my mind, Satan, uh, because I'm sold out. Uh, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, Elisha, what you do? Uh, I burned my plow and I killed the oxen. Why? I'm not coming back. Uh, I'm not coming back this way. Uh, I'm not going back that way. Uh, I'm going to go after a double portion. Uh, I'm going to live for God. Uh, not just barely. Uh, I'm going to sell out doubly. Uh, I'm going to be anointed of God. Uh, I'm going to be used of God. Uh, Why? Wow, it's a made up mind. Uh, man, I just almost feel a preaching spirit. I'm going to go on and read the verse 8 of chapter 4 of James. Watch what happens in this thing turns around. Watch what happens. He first now submit to God. Then he said, listen to this. Resist the devil. Then watch what he goes on and does. He gives us promises. He says this. When you resist him, he's going to flee. But watch. He don't stop. He goes on in the verse 8 and he says, then draw nigh to God. And God's going to draw nigh to you. Hey, not only are you just barely in this, baby, but the more you resist him and the more you submit yourself to God, the more you're going to be able to draw close to God. And the closer you get to him, the closer he'll get to you. There are keys that happen in the spirit. I've got to learn to submit and learn to resist evil. And God's going to draw me near to him. Verse 7, there were keys for this to happen in verse 7. They're back in the church, uh, and they change who they are, and they become a hypocrite and go to church uh, and start acting like a Christian. Uh, and on Thursday, when they leave church on Wednesday night, they go back to the old world and say, they ain't made their mind up, baby. I'm talking about your soul out on my you're sold out on Tuesday. You're sold out on Wednesday. You're sold out on Thursday. You're sold out on Friday. You're sold out on Saturday. And Sunday is just another day like any other day. I'm living for God like any other day. You'll get confused what day it is. Here's the day I'm going to live for God. Minded. You're not single in his mind. You're going to struggle spiritually because you ain't single in mind. I want to run with the worldly people on all through the week, young people, but I want to be spiritual on Sundays when I get up to sing. Tonight. What I'm telling you, if you get a hold of what I'm preaching, you're going to transform. You're going to have a transformation in your spiritual walk. My God, I'm just as sold out on any day of the week as I am on a Sunday. Uh, I'm just as fervent to live for God any day of the hour. It don't matter if it's in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening. Uh, or in the middle of the night. Uh, I'm sold out and living for the Lord. Uh, hey, devil, I'm not giving you no place. Uh, I'm not going to give you an inch uh, because you'll become my ruler. I'm not giving you no place. Uh, you don't have it on Monday. You don't have no day. You can come in. Uh, it's my mind made up. Uh, the problem was his mind wasn't made up. I want to go with the girl God don't want me to have. I can't you who you are spiritually. Got to ride home Monday night, I love our kids, man. Riding home in the van, they say like, man, I like that one redhead girl. They say, how was she doing in the altar? Yeah. They were looking for the girls in the altar. 
You know, friend, let me tell you, if you're a youth worker, you'll have to learn this. There's anything like that can make you run the aisle. If it wasn't, if you see him a beautiful out of theater, it was when she prayed in the altar. I turned around and said, man, she was praying in the altar. I saw her crying, uh, and she was involved in church. Uh, hey, yeah. And one of them said, what about so-and-so? I said, I happened to see her too. She was standing by the same one, and she was praying too. You say, what are you doing? Uh, I'm watching for who they're going to date. Uh, I want to know when they say it. What do you think, Pastor? I'll say, good. They're praying. Uh, they're seeking God. Uh, and they got their mind made up. Uh, who you choose uh, to determine uh, your spiritual outcome. I didn't have no problems in us. I was in the church with, with the worldly girls. I didn't date them. I didn't have no trouble with them because I didn't have nothing to do with them. I invite them to church, but I have somebody in church to get them. I never brought no carnal go to church and said, what do you think, Pastor? My Lord, my God, he would said, get out there in a back pew. You need to know he'd say, go to the altar and pray through right now. She's a devil. She's a pouting, carnal. But look at her hair. So what? It's changing colors in a few years. Look at her fingers. So what? It's going to change too. You better find out what's in her spirit. Is she on fire for God? Is she got a love for God? Is she in this thing so loud? Is she on the border like you are? I'm preaching, I'm preaching, I'm preaching. I've got families. Dad, Mom, you, you want to know where your boys are and your girls are? Where are they hanging out? Who are they hanging out with? They can handle it. They cannot handle it. They are not going to be able to. I place for the flag. I never went to Blake again. I've never been to University of Tennessee. I've heard them. Stay here. I never had a desire to go hang out with drunks. Spill their, spill their beer on me. Oh, they're smoking my face. Dance all around for their God of a basketball. And I'm preaching. I ain't following notes, and I'm preaching it up. And that makes me wonder why you want to go down there and watch them and worship that ball playing up and watch worship uh, those, with those things that they're worshiping with uh, and watch them uh, dirty language and all their junk. We have to do it on a job. It don't mean we have to select and go up there and do it with them in the worship of the world. You ought to examine my spirit. What's in my spirit towards God? It's all about resisting the devil now. I never forgot. Even though a girl like this place is just right. I'm going to move on. Tell me when I've been two hours and I'll cry. This is so important. There's a godly authority. Folks, I'm not talking about a pastor authority. We've done taught that lesson. We're talking tonight about a godly authority. There is a spiritual authority umbrella is the best way to tell you about it. And you need to get under that umbrella of God's authority. What's an umbrella do? It protects you from things that are coming down on you. And if you're under the umbrella of authority God's put in your life, when the things rain down on you, you can take consolation. God's in control of where I'm at. When you get rebellion, you step out from under the umbrella, and God's hand's not on your life as long any longer because you have chosen to step out from God's authority. And my God, all of a sudden, hell releases on your soul and attacks you with ungodly things. There's boys coming to the girls, and girls coming to your boys. You're outside of the authority. You want to say, Pastor, I got somebody I like. What do you think about them? And let Pastor say, I don't think so. Or say, I think you're on the right track. Go ahead. Why? Is there under the authority? of God too. Hey, there's a safety under that authority of God. 
Where does the authority come from? Matthew 28 and 18 tells us where it comes from. Uh, in verse 16 it says this, uh, then the 11 disciples, why? Because Judas is gone, uh, there's only 11 left. Uh, and when then the 11 disciples went down into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus uh, had what? Uh, had appointed them. Uh, God had told them where he wanted them to be and they were there. Uh, verse 17, uh, and when they saw him, uh, they worshiped him, uh, but something doubted. Verse 18, uh, and Jesus came uh, and spake unto them saying, uh, all power is given unto me uh, in heaven and in earth. Uh, and it, it's not a question. Uh, it's already decided. Uh, it's already known uh, that God uh, is almighty. Uh, that God uh, has all power. He's not a third person uh, in a trinity. Uh, he is God uh, manifest uh, in flesh. Uh, all God and all man. Because of the next three verses. Verse 19 becomes the great commission of the church. He determines the fact that I've got all the power. Here's what I'm going to do. I want you to go, therefore, and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. When the Lord said, I am with you, he just said, you have got all power with you. This has not changed. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have all power of God with you. You should be walking in that kind of a power with God. You ought to be able to bow your head when there's an opposition in your spirit. And you don't have to make it a lot of scene. You can kneel your head down and say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the fire, over the attack of my spirit I'm feeling right now. So he turns out to the disciples and he said, first of all, you go, you need to know you've got all power with you. I'm going to give you the power to go. Watch this. I'm going to teach this. Watch this. If you go to Luke chapter 9 and verse number 1 and 2, watch what's going to happen here. You want to get your book out. Get your textbook out. You don't want to miss something. What do you need you might have disciples of Christ. And he said, I have given you as disciples all the power, and I've given you the authority. Over what? What? He tells you. Over all devils. people pastor i read them the book i say we have power over all spirits principalities and powers through christ jesus watch what he says i've also given you the authority to cure the, the diseases you will pray and they'll heal then what he do? He said, I sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So he empowered them and he gave them the authority to do it. Mark 13, 34. Now you're going to need the New Testament Bible. We're going to go through some teaching here. Hallelujah. Tell me what two hours is at. Hallelujah. Mark 13, 34. For the Son of Man is as... Now listen, it's the world. Can you sit there and watch the TV? Then come Sunday because you can't handle this message tonight and say, I don't know why I'm struggling spiritually, Pastor. Mark, you know what somebody's going to do? They're going to miss church tonight. They're going to come to church. Say, I just say, I just you know why? You missed it. Mark 13, 34, for the Son of Man is as a man taketh a far journey. Watch what happens here. For he left his house and he gave authority to his servants. When the Lord left and he went back uh, and he was glorified into heaven, uh, and he left us in power of the things of God. We have the power over the treasures of the kingdom of God. Uh, and when the Lord left here, he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost uh, and I'm going to give you the power to give this gospel to the whole world. Hey, he, he ain't got no hands. He don't got feet except for yours and mine. He don't got a voice except for yours and mine. He, we're in charge of this thing. We're the authority figures of this thing. We ought to be praying people get the Holy Ghost. We ought to be praying people to get a healing. Why? We have the authority. We have the authority to do it. We're in charge of God's treasures. 
as the servants of the Lord. Matthew 10, watch what he has to do. Now, what did he do first? He, he called them in, and he gave Luke chapter 9, and he gave the, he gave the disciples the authority. Watch Luke, uh, Matthew chapter 10 and 1. Come on, turn with me. Come on. Let the finger do the walking in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, again, he gave them power against unclean spirits. This time's our counsel. And the spirit on people will attack me. Woo. And I run out that door and people still don't know what to do. This candy thing that's happened the other day. That thing popped up against me. Man, I leaned over on the edge of my feet and I said, In the name of Jesus Christ, I repeat you, Spirit, you come out of that person right now and you can have no more authority over that vessel because I'm here and I'm in full charge. In Jesus' name, be gone. In the name of the Lord, right now. authority in God's Word. And we have the authority to do so. And you know, I'm, I don't know y'all do. Go ahead and live your little half-baked junk. You have authority over these spirits. You can bind those spirits on your job for evil, and you can release good spirits for good on your job. It's in your power. It's in your ears, a disciple of Christ. Am I in the book or am I not in the book? He said, I'm going to give you 12 power over the unclean spirit. When that homosexual spirit comes on against you, you've got authority to tell it to go and to leave here in the name of Jesus. Give you the so I'm going to give it to you. He gave them power against unclean spirits. He gave it to them to cast them out uh, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Let's drop the eight, verse eight. It's time sake uh, to heal the sick, to cleanse the leper, to raise the dead, to cast out devils. Uh, freely you have received, freely given. Uh, what did he say? I've given you the power to do these things. Uh, you freely received it. Uh, I want you to freely give it. Uh, I want you to cleanse the lepers. Uh, I want you to pray for the raising of the dead. Uh, I want you to cast out the devils. Uh, I want you to heal the sick. Uh, I want you to get a hold uh, that you have authority. Uh, to do more than just uh, be a little Christian weekly. He doesn't sit there with the disciples. Is this okay? Okay, good. That's pretty encouraged. Somebody told me I stole one of my tapes from me. Woo! Feeling good. I hope they returned it to reason and satisfied the purposes. But here we go. I'm just having fun the last time. Look, verse 1. Why are you telling me what? He done done the disciples, but now he's going to go on to another dimension with them, on beyond the disciples. Watch what he's going to do here. Which they are disciples, but watch here, there's a, there's a push here. Watch this perhaps. Now, in Luke chapter 9, or in the first part of Luke 9, we see what he is dealing with the empowerment of the disciples. Watch what he's doing in Luke chapter 10, the length of that. As of these things, the Lord appointed other 70. Notice, the Lord appointed 70 others. And sent them two by two before the faith before his face into every city and every place. He sent these people to every place and every city, whether, whether he himself would come. So wherever God's going to go, he said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get me out. I'm going to get somebody out there ahead of me. He's not like John the Baptist. You know, I'm going to have you go out there and you're going to prepare the way ahead of me. Well, what did he do? He said, I'm going to send out you 70 in every city that I would go to and I'm going to come into. I want you to go ahead of me. And what is he going to do? Watch what he's going to do. He's going to do something in them. Watch. He said, every, every city and place I'm going to go, whether himself would come. He said, Verse 2, therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is greater, but the labors are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest. What are you doing, 70? I'm going to go ahead of what God's going to do, and I'm going to start getting the things of God in the matters of ahead of him, and that he would send forth labors into his harvest. I'm going to go ahead of him, and I'm going to start taking authority over things that are going to happen, and I'm going to believe there's going to be revival. In verse 3, go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among the thieves, and the 70 return again. Verse 17, I'm on a time say, let me drop to 17. And the 70 he returned again uh, with joy. Do you know what happened here, friend? Uh, he said, I've got seven of you. Uh, I've got things I want to do in the kingdom of God, uh, but I need seven of you. Uh, and by two by two, uh, I want you to go out with power and authority, uh, and I want you to start 
get in a hold of things. Why? Because there's going to be a revival in the in the land. There's going to be a revival where we're going to go. And I need you to get ahead of me with the authority of God and start having a move of God in their life. All right, here we go. One seventeen, and the seventy return again with joy. Woo! This Sunday night, let me tell y'all what's going on. Say, Lord, even the better recognize there ain't but one name that gives you the authority and the power. Father ain't enough, Son ain't enough, and Holy Spirit ain't enough. It takes Jesus' name. He never said mine. He ain't gonna believe it, man. He over there praying for those devils. They just get me missing, right? Hey, devil, stop this. Devil, that's enough. That's what we need to get. Devil, that's enough. Get out of mind. I give unto you power to tread upon the serpents and on the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, I give you, I give you the power to tread over all the power of the enemy. Honey, he is, let me tell you what he just told him. I give you authority all over all the power that hell and Satan has. You are in authority over them as a child of God. As a child of God, you are able to take authority. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. That the spirit of Sunday can get a way to rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I'm talking about authority. God's given authority. Keep your spark the other morning. She told me, you were reading the Bible and studying the other morning. And her reading, she said, hey, hey you got to look at this. Hey, in Numbers 11, 16, look at this. I want you to look at this. In Numbers 11 and verse 16. I think this is so powerful. And it is funny to some of my previous teaching notes on the facts of appointments and the authority that have been given. But watch Numbers 11. This is an Old Testament setting of Scripture. But I wonder if the New Testament pa Apostle Paul and all of them were coming off of these setting of Scripture here. Because watch this in Numbers 11 and verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them into the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there, there with thee. Notice this, what he's saying. I need you to bring 70 leaders with you. What is that? He said, I want you to bring 70 people that know what authority. I want you to bring these 70 people that know what it is to be an officer. I want you to bring the leaders, the elders, and the officers, and leadership. And I'm going to show you, watch what's going to happen here. I want them to learn to stand with you. You know what your pastor needs? He needs you to get a hold of this, what I'm teaching tonight. And don't just depend on the fact that I can believe for you. But you need to step up beside me and say, I can stand with you too on that, Pastor. I believe I have that authority, Pastor. But I pray in the Holy Ghost and to claim the work of God and the promises of God. You need to step up beside the pastor. Verse 17, and I will come down. Notice what the Lord says. And I will come down and talk with thee, be there. And I will take of the Spirit, which is up on thee. And I will put it up on them. If I can get it over there, whoa, I want the Spirit of the Lord on me. Hey, Pastor, they can use me over here. Hey, I'd like to do this. I'd like to be involved in this. Why? Because I want to know what it's like to have God use me in the Spirit of the Lord. Hey, I believe that some of us need to get a fresh reawakening and say, I want it, Lord. I want a fresh anointing. I want a fresh visitation of the Spirit of God. I want a fresh revival of authority of God in my life. I want to remember the pleading of the blood. I want to learn what it is uh, to have a testimony of victory. And I will come down and talk with you. Uh, 
come down and talk with me, baby. Stand there with me, and I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take up the spirit which is up on thee and put it up on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. Let thou bear it not thyself alone. What is he saying here? I'm going to empower this church with more than just the pastor. Hey, I believe this ought to be empowered more than just what pastor can did. Hey, you ought to be getting something from God. You ought to be living under victory. You ought to be living under an spirit of authority in the Holy Ghost. And God's going to do something in my midst. Would God take so much time to put the chain of authority into a family? Not put it in the place of the church. What can God do is put the chain of authority into the family? Well, that's okay. Let's read the things in 5.1. Submit. Submit. His wife submit. In all verse 21 says, submit to his family. One to another in the field of God. First he said, I want everybody to submit. Then he said, why is he Then I'm saying, why is he But we got, we got a big source of people who can get a lot of stuff. All he did was die. He died. Some people don't understand it. Some people don't understand it. And if it's a bloody thing, I'm the man. You guys can hear. What do you think of the last thing? Well, what does that mean? That means you're not going to hold on to no selfish junk that would divide your relationship with your wife. Hebrews 13, 7, 17 says this. Obey him that have the rule over you. And submit yourself for your watch to your soul as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Clean, and I didn't like clean, but I still love my pastor. 1 Peter 2.13 tells us to submit the laws of the land. 1 Peter 5. Well, you do have to obey the laws of the land. 1 Peter 5, 5 says this, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elders. What's the I 
the of my character. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. committed to his purpose. And the carnal goes from his place. To pass the missionary candidate, I will not have thought of it. I listened to this, I read it a long time ago. To pass the missionary candidate, at 3 a.m. one cold morning, a missionary candidate walked into an office for a scheduled interview with the examiner of a mission board. I said, 3 a.m., that's before the sun comes up. He waited until 8 a.m., five hours later, when the examiner arrived. The examiner said, uh, let us begin first. Please spell Baker. The young man replied, B-A-K-E-R. Very good. Now, let me, let's see what you know about figures. How much is twice two? Four, replied the applicant. Very good, the examiner said. I'll recommend you to the board tomorrow that you be appointed. You have passed the test to be a missionary. Now you're sitting there going, what? 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 What happened? You know why I'm doing this? Because there are times where God can try your spirit about what's inside of you. And you say, you've gotten off topic. No, I am not. That's going to find out if you can submit to things you do not understand. What happened? At the board at the board meeting, the examiner spoke highly of this applicant and said, He has all the qualifications of a missionary. Let me explain first. I tested him on self-denial. I told him to be at my house at three in the morning. He left a warm bed and came out in the cold without a word of complaint. Number two, I tried him out on punctuality. He arrived on time. Third, I examined him on a patient. I made him wait five hours to see me after telling him to come at three. Fourth, I tested him on temper. He failed to show any sign of it. He didn't even question my delay. Fifth, I tried his humility. I asked him questions that a small child could answer, and he showed no effect. 